Uh, guys, so this is uh, lecture three, so firefighting system. Okay, first off, you'll we'll cover about up to seven subtopics uh, from the fundamental of fire science, and then how the fire developed, and then what sort of initiation the fire is developed from, and then the classes of fire. And then there will be a bit of authority and regulation of the act. And then we have now a bit about the principle of fire extinguishment and then the passive and active fire protection system. Okay, so this is the reference and then the cost learning outcome. So this is a basic building services. At the end of it, you should be able to apply the design procedure of various building services technology. <coughs> okay, so the fire fundamental of fire science. So you have a fire, and then if you find a fire locally, you have to inform everyone, and then you have to react immediately, either to put out the fire or to uh, not do anything if you do not know what you're doing. And then if you know what you're doing and you know what type of fire it is and what type of fire, what type of extinguisher to use, then you may proceed to extinguish the fire. So fire has been around for many years and then it has been the way it has revolutionized the way we cook and we eat the food. So basically we use fire to cook and eat our food and then for commercial purpose, then we use it to also make food, either that or you are using it to make energy. So historically, fire is a good servant but a bad master. So if we are used to use it and is we are able to control it, then we will be able to use it to make things that are beneficial to us. But if it becomes a master, if it goes out of control, then it's gonna burn down everything and even cook us alive. So what is the basic of fire? Fire is essentially a chemical reaction known as combustion. So combustion is a series of chemical reaction between fuel, oxygen. So uh, once they are ignited, once a heat source is ignited, fire is born. So fire requires three elements to keep it alive, which is the heat, fuel, and oxygen. So you take anyone out, uh, any element out of it, then the fire will die off. So this is the three important component in a fire. So you will need the oxygen, you will need the heat, and you need the fuel. So the fuel is to is the energy which is being used up to maintain the fire the oxygen is used to combine and then they are to fuel the fire and then the heat is where the fire grow so as the temperature grow you'll be able to maintain itself so this is what fire is essentially about and then there's this fire tetra head on. So uh, instead of three elements in a tetra head on fire, so there's a chemical reaction. So this chemical reaction can be in terms of uh, some elements that is very combustible. So this is where this fire come about. <clears throat> so uh, Less about starting a fire. So starting a fire isn't really easy, but one is that one you have started a fire and you have put out uh, when you have a lot of uh, fuel there for them to burn in terms of the wood or your furnitures, then you need a way to control them. So preventing fire is uh, something that we always have to take account into. So most of the fire, they started off small. If you are able to extinguish it before it grows bigger, then you are actually eff effectively combating fire. Then, because fire have three elements 
they are uh, they require three elements you are able to actually extinguish them by just removing one of the chemical reaction and then by removing one of the chemical reaction either the fuel either the oxygen or either the heat then you are actually effectively uh, inhibiting the chemical reaction required to maintain the, the growth of the fire or to maintain the life of the fire. Okay, here it says two important factors to remember in preventing and extinguishing a fire. So if the three components are missing or removed, then the fire will just go out or they will not start. So this is the important thing to remove a fire. They have three. They have these three component. So either you remove or you uh, take off, then there will not be any fire. So this is a more definition about what is a fuel, and then there will be another two more for oxygen and the uh, heat. So fuel is necessary to feed a fire. And without fuel, the combustion process will terminate. So if there's nothing to burn, is that is then uh, if there's no component that is able to provide energy for the fire, then for sure the fire will be gone. Okay, the fuel molecules involved in the fire must be in vapor, which is gas. However, the initial fuel source may be in solid, liquid, or gas. Okay, why is this uh, sentence like this? Because of how a uh, fire is being burned. So if a fire wishes to grow very, very big, you'll find that uh, gas or fuel, the molecules, is, is easier to have a chemical reaction at a gas stage as opposed to a solid liquid or as, a, as opposed to a solid or liquid state. That's why a uh, few molecules involved in the fire must be in vapor. So if you actually look at the petrol or you're at the petrol station, if you look at a few of the video online, you actually are able to extinguish the, the fire. If you are to pour liquid petroleum on it, it will not uh, burn out. It will not explode because what is actually burning is the gas. If you are actually playing around with petroleum, which I do not recommend you to play around, but you can go and have a look at it. Liquid petroleum do not burn. If you have a fire on it, if you have, if you are holding a torch, and then you are just to actually dip the torch into the liquid petroleum, the liquid petroleum actually will extinguish the fire. But if you are to have the torch and you are to put it over the liquid where the where there's gas, then you will actually ignite the liquid petroleum. You will burn out, you, the liquid petroleum will start to burn. So this is the idea on why to fuel a fire, it has to be in gas. But initial, the initial fuel source may be in solid or liquid. So any material can act as a fuel, but to actually really fuel the fire, they have to be in uh, gas state so for gas they are like methane propane or lpg this is your liquid petroleum gas so liquid petroleum gas just by itself there it will it will emit vapor so what is being burned is actually the liquid petroleum gas vapor so this next is the liquid like petrol and diesel so what they are burning is the gas and then solid like wood coal plastic so all everything we have is actually burnable we just need enough heat to vaporize the fuel into gas state and then you will just burn down everything for and then the fire will just burn out everything <clears throat> okay next is the uh, next component in a fire which is oxygen so Combustion process involves the oxidation of fuel molecules. So the availability of oxygen is vital for the process to exist. So fire burns because of oxygen. So that's why oxygen is important 
is one of the important components in a uh, fire. So fire occurs when a fuel combines with the oxygen in the air and give off heat. So this is uh, one of the laws and one of the way for fire uh, to occur. So oxygen is being burned to release the heat. So air normally contains about 21% oxygen, 78% nitrogen and 1% other gases. So air in this case is our atmosphere air. So unless we are doing it in a special environment, this is what sort of air we have. Okay, so this is a picture that shows a candle being burned off. So you have uh, about one to two inch of a fire and then there will be an oxidation zone. So this is where the air is being burned and then there's a combustion zone. This is where it's being burned also. And then the wick, this is the area, this is the body of the fuel. And then there's a liquid pool of wax. So this is the fuel also. <coughs> so this is the stages of fire development and fire spread. <coughs> so uh, fire develop in stages. It will not go from uh, small suddenly to big. It will not start off straight away big. So they usually start off through a source, which is through the first stage, which is ignition. So an ignition is a process in which fuel react with oxygen to give heat and light. So it can be very fast or, or very slow. So it is usually caused by a fire source. So anything that causes heat, that can be a source of ignition for the fire. And then once it's ignited, then they will start to try to grow. So a fire will try to grow rapidly if there's sufficient fuel and oxygen to burn. And then uh, you'll see here there's a flash over. So simultaneous ignition of all combustible in an enclosed area. So Flash over occurs when the majority of the surface is heated to the point at which they give off flammable gas that are not they are hot enough to sustain. So this case is rare. So if you look around the internet, if you have a dust or you have flour in an area, so you have a flash over fire, which means that because everything, because the fuel are suspended in the area. And then they are at the they are at the optimal temperature, just the right temperature that the fire can just spread instantaneously. So this is what is called a flash over fire, which means we just a spark all the material because they are floating in the air, either they are dust or they are the flour, they will actually they are actually able to get ignited instantaneously means the, it will go a big boom. Lah. So this is a flash, flash over fire, which means all the material in the air, they got burned. If not, then uh, fire will usually process in a normal stage, which is ignition. And then once it sparked a small fire, then it will start to grow bigger. And then it will envelop the whole room. Lah. Either that, it will be a flash over, but this will be, this is a very bad case. Ah. And then once it developed the whole building, develop the whole room, then move on to the whole building. Then once there's nothing to burn or there's no oxygen, then the fire will decay. So uh, this is how a graph of a uh, fire in stages usually goes. So they'll start off slow at the source of the ignition, then they will slowly grow. And then once it reaches the stage where the room is heated enough, then it will go towards a flash over, which means it will start to rapidly grow. Or, and then once it's fully developed, then it will start to decay because there's no nothing left to burn or there's no more air 
for it to sustain the fire. So this is another picture. So uh, you see that heat and smoke will usually go up, but fire spread in every direction. So uh, in a chain process where the fire is going up, when there's no when the there's no space left for the hot fire to spread, it will start to spread to every part of the room. And then as every part of the room is getting getting heated up, then the fire will start to spread rapidly. Then once this whole room is on fire and there's no place for the fire to spread, it will start to spread to other room, other area. So this is another picture of the first figure where from ignition they will grow and then from fully developed then they will, when there's nothing left to burn then they will start to decay. So the temperature will go up as the fire develop because they are actually enveloping the whole room. <clears throat> so fire can spread through movement of heat from hotter to cooler area by three means. So first is the convection, which is heat transferred by the movement of liquid or gas. Radiation, so heat is transferred to all buildings and material that is adjacent to or not, and not to the fire. And then conduction. So basically this is uh, from liquid, gas. This is a different, different state. The fire can spread either through solid or through liquid or through air. So when fire starts in a room, hot smoke cannot escape. So this hot smoke is how one of the way fire spreads. So when the room is getting filled with this hot smoke, then the material will start to catch on fire. So heat is transferred from smoke to ceiling and wall by convection. Then the fire radiate heat outward to the rest of the room and then the hot smoke radiate heat downward to the room, then the heat is also conducted through the wall and ceiling. So this is how a chain process of how the heat is being spread across the room. And then once the heat is sufficiently high enough, fire will start to cut, uh, ignite. The fire will start to grow on the furniture that you have. <coughs> So smoke, smoke is very poisonous and they are able to transfer heat. So smoke is poisonous because inside there is gases such as carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, water vapor. So these are poisonous gas. So if you are to inhale the carbon monoxide, it's actually uh, in your body, instead of Breathing in oxygen, uh, breathing in the air, if you're breathing in carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide has this sort of function where in our body we we circulate oxygen using red blood cell. But carbon monoxide has this sort of special feature that <clears throat> they are 200 times at least 200 times more easily to bind into our red blood cell rather than our oxygen. So this is why it's a poisonous gas, because instead of our body circulating oxygen, the carbon monoxide will hijack the cell and then it will transport itself into our body, around our body. And then because we do not, uh, because our body are not carrying oxygen to our vital organ, then we will die. Lah. So carbon monoxide is poisonous to our body because it's easily more absorbed into our body rather than oxygen. So we uh, mostly in a fire, people die due to smoke, not because of uh, the fire or heat. Lah. So we die usually to smoke because of the carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. So any percentage of higher amount of carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide, if you are to breathe it into our body. So first thing first is we will get unconscious due to not having enough oxygen into our brain. So this is why it caused most of the death in human during a fire. <coughs> so it's not only about the 
gas, which is dangerous. The smoke is also irritating, which, cause, which causes coughing and streaming eyes. So it's also difficult to see through because of the unburned carbon and it's black and then it's hot. So you know, this is the main cause of death in human in a fire. <coughs> so you move through open door to the top of the house because that smoke is light. That's why you will go up and then coupled with the hot gases. So you will definitely go up to the top of your house. So when smoke, uh, smoke gases are in killed, it led to suffocation and death because of this poisonous gas. So as it rises, it mixes with cold air, less hot but more smoke. So because it's when smoke mixes with cold air, it starts to get dissipated. So there will not be a lot of this poisonous gas, but it will make the area very, uh, very hard to see through. So smoke will always go up and in a fire, this is what you encounter. So there will not be a lot of damages on the lower floor, but because heat is going in an upward direction, is a uh, building with a fire that is starting at a low uh, floor will usually spread upwards instead of going downwards because of how how the heat uh, generally move. So heat is moved through the usage of the smoke and then as the smoke is going up, it will hit the rail on top. Okay, so uh, there's a different, different sort of ignition. I, we will cover this next week. Lah. So this is about it for today. So I just stop here.